Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Elm Creek Takeover. So, if you'll notice here, I have got the absolute biggest tether that I figured this tractor would handle. If you guys saw the last video, you know that we're on a hay baling, uh, silage baling contract spree. And uh, we're up here at fields 13 and 14. We've got to ted these two fields. Uh, before we can rake it because we are um, baling this for hay. Now, to go along with the smallest tether in the game, I leased the largest uh, windrower in the game. And this was not the windrower that I was intending on leasing, um, but when I got to thinking about it, I was like, man, this is already going to take enough time to get these contracts done. Let's go ahead and spend a couple extra thousand dollars and we'll have these things um, wind road in no time. So, without further ado, let's hop in this tractor and see about getting these two fields tetted and raked, and we'll be on our way. Okay, turn this little tether on. There we go, and we're gonna hammer down. Looks like we can ted at about nine miles an hour. The animations uh, are really good in this game so far that I've seen um, and that I've noticed. I mean, that's that's a much better tether animation than um, than what we've had in previous games. Looks really nice. Looks pretty realistic. Now, in Oklahoma, where I'm from, we don't ted hay because it's hot and dry enough that we don't have to ted it to get it to dry. Um, typically, like maybe some of the guys that that grow. You know, irrigated alfalfa or something like that, and maybe they will use a tether. But for the most part, I you never see a tether, especially in the part of Oklahoma that I'm I'm in. I'm from Western Oklahoma, and you never see a tether, never. So this is for me. This is just kind of sort of like an added step. It's kind of like busy work, uh, but I do I understand that there's a lot of places in the world where you have to tether your hay, and a lot of places in the United States you have to tether your hay before you can bale it. Before it'll never get dried. So we're gonna do it. Here we are, tedding our hay. Now, if I was gonna buy a tedder, like if, if because really, uh, let me explain the reason why I'm doing these contracts. The reason I'm I'm doing these contracts is one because I saw the opportunity to make um, some pretty decent money pretty quickly. Um, so that is one of the reasons why we're doing these contracts. And the second reason why we're doing these contracts is because I want to see if this is something that I want to invest money in actually purchasing some equipment. So the way I'm going to know if I want to invest money to purchase equipment is basically how long is it going to take me to make this money. Um, I've got three contracts. I think both of these fields are for like five or six thousand dollars a piece. And then I have field 71, which is a very large field. I have the contract for it, and it pays something crazy like $23,000 or something like that. So um, what I'm doing is I'm, just, I'm doing some research and making some money at the same time. If you guys have been following this series so far, you know that I'm big into contract spraying because it's a quick, it's a quick way to make some pretty good money. Um, but there's not always fields to spray and I like to do things other than just spraying you know I like drop tractors and things like that I like I enjoy baling hay in real life so I've always been kind of drawn to that in the game um, so yeah that's kind of why we're doing what we're doing we're just kind of we're just testing the waters to see if this is something we might want to do on a large scale basis. And then another thing, um, it's it's nice to do small contracts like this um, because you get to test out the, out the equipment before you actually buy it. You know, you get to test out whether, you know, does it make sense to buy this giant wind rower right off the bat and spend all the extra money or can I get by with a smaller one without going crazy because it takes so long to get, you know, the hay raked. So that's, 
that's the kind of the rhyme and the reason as to why we're doing what we're doing. If you guys are new to my channel, I appreciate you stopping by and giving me a chance. It means a lot to me. Um, for those of you guys who are subscribers, I appreciate that. Thanks for coming back to check out what we're doing. And if you guys are liking the videos and you would give me a thumbs up that would be amazing and I would appreciate it and um, if this looks like something you might uh, be interested in because I'm gonna give you at, at the end of this I'm gonna give you a breakdown okay how much money did we spend how much money did we make and how much time did it take to make that money so if it's something you think you might be interested in seeing the end of be sure to hit the subscribe and hit the little bell so that you know when I release a video and that's my only commercial, guys. That's it. All right, so we're just about done tedding. Tedding, tettering, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're just about done. We are done right there. And this is the only... This is the only two fields we're going to have to do this in. There are two other bailing contracts. And I couldn't go ahead and activate them because I guess an FS... Uh, 22, you're only allowed to have three active contracts at one time. That seems kind of silly to me, but whatever. Um, there'll probably be a mod to fix that before before too long. Alright, so what we're going to do is I'm going to hop out and I'm going to unhook this thing. Now, I am using the manual attach mod because it's just cool. And I like to manually uh, attach and detach things. So we'll lower this to the ground. I always forget to lower it to the ground. Now we're going to unhook it. There we go. We're going to unhook it. And we will get our rake hooked back up. And we'll probably just go ahead and hook the tether back on the front for safekeeping. I like when it, when I in in games past whenever I've played the game with a tractor with a three point hitch on the front, I've always liked to go ahead and uh, carry my tether around on the front of my tractor um, because it's just handy. You know, you can always just hop off and hook and unhook it. Um, we don't really need to hook. Uh, I don't believe we need to hook up the PTO or the hydraulics because we're just um, we're basically just carrying it at this point. All right, let's get this monstrosity of a hay rake unfolded. So, like I said, this is the biggest hay rake in the game, and why I picked this one is basically just like. If I could afford it, this is the hay rake I would buy, just because it's the biggest hay rake and it gets the work done the quickest. And I just kind of wanted to see um, if this thing was would be worth the extra money uh, when it's time, if it's time to buy my own hay rake. I just kind of wanted to see, okay, how much more work could I potentially get done with a, this big of a hay rake than I could with one like half of the size, for instance. So that's why I got the big hay rake because I wanted to see how much work I could get done in basically the shortest amount of time. So far. It's looking pretty good. Makes a nice one row. It'll be easy to bail. Um, and these fields are going to be done in three passes. And field, field 71 down in the southern part of the map is a pretty good sized field. And it is, uh, it's going to take more than three passes to get it finished. Um, so it'll be a good test for this big, for this big rake kind of see how long it takes me to rake that field because it is actually one of the 
bigger. Whoops, slow down just a little bit. It's actually one of the bigger fields on the map. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see that how long it takes. I have a feeling though that now that I've used this big one, I'm not gonna want to use anything else. So it could have been a mistake uh, leasing this big rake to start with. that's done let's fold this baby back up and we're going to get on our way down to field 71 and I will see you guys when I get there Alright guys, so we just made it here to field 71. As you can see, it's a pretty good sized field. Uh, let's go take a look. Let's see here on the map and kind of see how big it is relative to some of the other fields. So here's 71. So you know, 70 is probably bigger, 68 is probably bigger, um, 32 is probably bigger, 10 is probably about the same size. but. You know, it's, it's one of the bigger fields on the map. So let's see how fast it takes us to get this thing raked. We'll get this big, uh, this big windrower, fold it out. And we'll just see how long it takes. Cause I'm interested in knowing. Let's get this big started, get it down on the ground and we will get going. I hope the baler that I'm planning on using can really eat some hay because this thing makes a pretty good sized windrow. Hope my tractor can drive over it. So tell me, uh, tell me down in the comments guys, what would you like to see me try? Um, you know, I thought, I thought, well, maybe I should try some, you know, cattle, maybe I should just keep doing contracts, you know, I want to make, I want to make money, uh, I need money to be able to, um, you know, grow the farm, grow the business, things like that, um, so I need to make, I need to make money, I can't just spend money, because I don't have a lot of money, you know, I got $21,000, I can take loans if they're going to be worth it. Um, but I don't want to take loans just to take loans. So, what do you guys think? What have you guys tried? I mean, I know a lot of you have probably been playing Farming Simulator. Um, some of you, uh, maybe not. But I think a lot of you probably have. What have you guys tried, and how has it worked out? I'd like to know, because I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really doing a lot of Farming Simulator 22, um, video watching at this point. I'm not really doing a lot of research. Um, as to, you know, I've seen some videos out there like, you know, this crop makes the most money and, you know, things like that, but, um, even if it doesn't make most, make the most money that, you know, there's some things I'm not really going to want to spend my time doing, you know, uh, like root crops, for instance, I, I think probably they do make a lot of money. I have, I, I can't remember, I think 2000 and... 15 maybe is when root crops officially came out, you know, when Giants actually officially released um, released the first root crops, I think maybe it was 2015. I have never, I have never ever, in all my hours and hours and hours of playing Farming Simulator, I have never grown a root crop. Um, you know, not sugar beets, not, uh, what's the other one? Um, well, we got sugar beets and um, potatoes. Never grown a potato, never grown a sugar beet. Um, mostly because, you know, the, the harvesting part of it just 
looks mind-numbingly boring because you know the equipment's so small and I I suppose that the yields probably pretty pretty good um, so it seems like it would just take forever to get that done and plus you know like I said I'm from Oklahoma so you know we grow potatoes in our gardens and um, I don't believe I've ever even actually seen a sugar beet before so you know if you guys wanted to see it I'm not opposed to doing it but um, maybe not at this point in the game like those are cool crops and I'm glad that Giants you know included those for those folks out there in the world that you know grow sugar beets and grow potatoes on them you know that's just what they do you know it's cool that Giants you know, put those in the game for, for those folks. But for me, it's just kind of like, eh, eh, I'm not so sure about that. Now, cotton, on the other hand, is something that we do grow a lot of here in Oklahoma that is mildly interesting to me. And, I, I you know, I know cotton got introduced in uh, 20, uh, or, uh, sorry, FS19, but I never grew it in FS19. And, um... A lot of the reason is just because, I don't know, I just didn't grow it. But um, cotton is not something that I would be opposed to growing at some point. Not anytime soon because, you know, the harvesters are like half a million dollars or something like that. But eventually I wouldn't mind growing some cotton. So, to be honest with you, so far, uh, it seems like, boy, that picks up slow. Sorry about the trees, folks. Sorry about the trees. Boy, that really picks up slow. Hmm, that's going to be hard to eat for the baler. But, since this is farming simulator, um, it probably will eat it just fine. All right, so far, I would say, and I'm not, you know, I haven't even bailed yet. Um, so far, I'm not sure if the bailing contracts are worth my time or not. That's probably going to depend on how many bales it makes and how long it takes me to transport those bales because these are going to the animal the bales the bales from down here are going to the animal I think cell the, the animal cell barn I think is what it, what it is um, that's where they're going and it's not completely on the other side of the map but it's not close so there's very likely going to be a lot of road time, and I'm sort of hoping that this thing, that this field doesn't make like a thousand bales. It may make a lot of bales. I hope it doesn't make too many bales. Because um, that's just going to be a lot of road time. And, I don't know. I kind of feel like by this point, if I had gotten the right um fields to spray that I probably could have made you know if you, if you, if you get three big fields to spray um, that are paying pretty good and by pretty good I mean you know ten eleven twelve thousand dollars you can make that money pretty quick I, I if I think if I was spraying and I got four good fields to spray that you know would add up to you know, let's, let's say there were hundred, say there were ten thousand dollars a piece to spray. I probably could have made, you know, forty thousand dollars so far, like already. So, you know, if we're talking about um, how 
how efficient that this bailing thing is going to be as far as making money is concerned, I really am not sure yet. Okay, I'm going to try to raise this up a little earlier. And, of course, I missed some. But I was trying to raise it up and not, you know, not wipe out. I missed some again. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not so sure about... I mean, the rake is, is... I'm definitely getting a lot of work done, but it's not really easy to get it done because if you don't pick up the rake soon enough, then, you know, you take out the windrow that's your outside round, and if you let it down too slowly, then you miss hay. I kind of feel like I should just go around and around and around the field, but... Mm, I don't know. Generally, when I bail hay in real life, I, you know, make as many outside rounds as I need to make, and then I go back and forth like I'm doing here. Um, but I don't know. It may not be the most efficient way to do it in Farming Simulator and not, you know, for example, screw up my... screw up my end rows. Because I need to put this break down about here. Well, no, I didn't get any that time. I didn't mess any up the end row at that time. So, I don't know. We'll see. Alright, I am going to cut to... Um, until I'm a little, a little further along in this field. Well, alright folks, we're back. And we are just about finished here. I'm getting better at using this... Uh, this rake and getting it down in an appropriate amount of time so that I don't miss any of the windrow and I don't hit any of my um, my headland windrow. Um, still not perfect but I am getting better. So guys tune in for the next episode because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be bailing. We're going to try our hand at FS22 bailing. So guys, if you've made it this long through the video, I greatly appreciate you tuning in, and um, we'll see you next time. Bye.